Google Notebook LM is an incredible tool that I want to introduce to you all today. This is something that I think will revolutionize studying, working, researching. It is a way to help you study. And I think English learners, language learners around the world could benefit with using this resource. So today I want to introduce Google Notebook LM and talk about what it can do, the kinds of things that it can make and it can generate. So you can see on the screen behind me, we have Notebook LM open. Notebook LM is Google's AI study and research tool. It's like having an interactive computer in your notebook. The idea is that you add sources. This can be website articles, videos, PDF files into Notebook LM. It will then read, understand those sources and provide summaries and some other cool things that I think you'll be surprised about. I'm going to use this to show you how to study with my podcast episodes. I make the Thinking in English podcast. Hopefully you'll listen already. I have hundreds of episodes and sometimes they can maybe be slightly challenging for you. Or you listen to my podcast while walking the dog, listening passively. But if you really want to study and improve your English, maybe you need a deeper understanding. You need to be actively studying. This is what I want to show you, how you can try that with Notebook LM. Let's get started. You can first click this Try Notebook LM. You can see I already have two notebooks ready. What we'll do is we'll create a new notebook. If we click here, Create New. Now, the first thing it asks you to do is add a source. You can see there are different options. You have drag and drop, choose file. Here it says you can do a PDF, you can do a text, a markdown file, an audio file like an MP3. So if you download my podcast episodes from whatever podcast player you listen to, you can upload them here. You can go onto Google Drive if you have something in your docs or your slides. You can link directly a website. Sometimes it doesn't work if the website is behind a paywall, like the Financial Times, or if the website doesn't allow you to link it. But a lot of the websites do work. You can also add a YouTube video, which is what we're going to do today. Or you can just copy and paste text into here. So if a website link doesn't work, what I recommend doing is Control A, select everything, and then paste it into the, the notebook here. And you'll still get the same result. But we're going to do this with my podcast episodes. And I think the easiest way to do this is by going onto YouTube and copying the YouTube links for my episodes. So you can see I already have YouTube opened. I was experimenting before. So this is my latest episode. There's an ad on the screen. Thank you for watching ads. Helps me make money. Thank you. But we're not going to do this fast fashion episode to start with. I think let's do something grammar based. You can see on the right we have my podcast playlist and this blue episode here is a grammar episode. Is football better than basketball? So what we're going to do is we're going to share that, copy the link, go back to our untitled notebook, add a YouTube in there. You can see on the left hand side that source is being added into my untitled notebook. What it's done straight away is it has summarized the YouTube video, the podcast episode, right? It presents a grammar lesson focused on comparative adjectives. And so you can see on the screen quite a few things already. On the left hand side of the screen, you have your source book. These are all of the sources you have added to Google Notebook LM. You can add up to 50 sources and they can all be different types. For example, let's go back to YouTube. Let's go down to the other grammar lesson down here, comparisons of equality. Share that one, copy that link as well. Go back to my notebook, add a source, another YouTube source, adding that in here. So now we have two videos, two sources. In the center screen, we have what's called the chat. This chat allows you to type and interact with the AI and it will 
help explain things about the sources I have provided. Let's just say, give a one sentence summary of these sources. You can ask it, like with ChatGPT, like with other AI, you can talk with this AI. You can ask it a question. I've asked you for one sentence summary and it has these sources from the Thinking in English podcast offer English grammar lessons by comparing football and basketball and budget and luxury travel. Okay, so now you can ask it another question. You can say, please explain what comparative grammar is. You can ask it and it will be able to respond to you and explain, right? So it's given you a detailed explanation here, comparisons of superiority, comparisons of equality. It has inequality in here, which is another episode I'll be releasing soon. You might be thinking, wow, this is in English, lots of English words. Just ask it to translate to your language. Translate to Japanese. I live in Japan. Let's have a look. Translate to Japanese. The screen is now processing, it's now translating. AI, of course, takes slightly longer. And here you go, right? It's given me a Japanese translation of this English grammar. On the right hand side of the screen, you have more what's called the studio. And in the studio, you have the audio overview section. One of the most powerful tools, I think, here. And I have a moral dilemma. On the one side, I don't think AI should be creating podcasts because I don't want AI to steal my job because eventually AI will be able to make thinking in English episodes better than I can. But on the other side, this is such a cool tool. So I'm going to generate a podcast discussion. It's going to take a few minutes. It's going to generate a conversation between a male and female host based on the two sources I have provided. They're going to explain and summarize what is mentioned in these articles. Okay, while that's generating, let's take a look at some of the other things there are here. You can see in the notes section, you have the ability to add a note. Here you can just add your own note. This is really cool. And then done with it. Okay, so you've added a note here. So that's for your study purposes, right? You see these sources, you're listening to something, you think, oh, let me note that down. Let me go back into add a new note. Let me say, okay, less than because that's one of the grammar points, or more than, or e r, and you can add your examples here, and it will keep it. So it's like having a notebook. You're able to make notes as you're doing. The next thing underneath the add note is the study guide. We open the study guide. It's generating a study guide based on these two sources. And what the study guide is, it has a quiz, vocabulary, and also some comprehension questions. In this quiz, you can look at these quizzes. I think this works better for not the grammar episodes, but maybe for the more comprehension-based, vocabulary-based episodes. Anyway, it has these quiz questions that you can it has the answers here as well. It has essay format questions and then a glossary of key terms. Right, so that's quite useful to have these key terms that have been used in the episode. Let's go back to what else is there. The FAQ section. FAQ stands for Frequently Asked Questions. So let's have a look at what are the frequently asked questions. Question one, what are comparative adjectives and when are they used? It has the explanation here. This again is really cool. It has these important questions and explains them and answers them quickly for you. There is also a timeline function. Not particularly important in this episode. I don't Think, or in this situation. But if you were to upload documents, various documents which came at various times, this will help you organise those things in your brain. Let's have a look at timeline of main events. It doesn't specify the release date for some reason. Maybe I should mention my dates in here in the future. It's episode one, episode two. It has the cast of characters, it's all the people I have mentioned in the episode. All of this is done just from those YouTube links. It's taken all of this information out of the YouTube links. It mentions my wife, mentions my friend, who might or might not exist. <laughs> it mentions Lionel Messi, all the people I have mentioned in those episodes. And then you have a briefing doc as well. This is like basically a detailed summary of everything that is said in these episodes. Everything I have mentioned in here. You can see it's generating... I think it's almost ready. Here we go, it's ready now. We can open up the briefing doc. This document provides a briefing on the main themes and important ideas presented in the two podcast episodes. 
by Tom Wilkinson. It has source one, the main theme, the key grammar concepts, the purpose, explains this, conclusion, then the source two, the main theme, the key grammar concepts, the comparisons I talked about, and then the conclusion. So again, really useful. It's taking a long episode and compressing it into the key ideas. If you just want to be reminded about these key ideas, this Google Notebook LM can do that for you. And imagine doing this for any video, any podcast episode, any article you find on the internet. It is a really powerful study tool. But the two things I want to talk about most are the podcast episode that it will create for you and the mind map. Let's start with the mind map. A mind map is something I think lots of people make at school. And I've just clicked here, mind map. It's generated the mind map for me. We can open it. And it creates this really awesome interactive mind map. It has taken my two episodes and started off with the comparative grammar. It then split that into superiority and equality. Let's have a look at equality. Okay, within the equality, it has the structure, the meaning, the examples. Inequality has the meaning and example. And then it has all of the different things I compared in the episode, which is awesome. Let's say that you want to know more about the structure. You can click on the structure and on the in the chat function of the website, it will once again give you more examples. My friend is as tall as me. This book is as interesting as the one I read last week. This cake is as delicious as it looks. He runs as fast as a professional athlete. It has all of these examples that it can give to you. And that's why I think this mind map is a really awesome tool. And the more sources you add, the more detailed your mind map will become, which is really cool. The most interesting thing I think here is the podcast episode it creates. I'm just going to play this podcast episode for you to start with. So let's play. Okay, so think about this for a sec. Yeah. Like, how often do you find yourself actually comparing things? Is this new phone really worth the upgrade? Or uh, is this coffee shop as good as the one down the street? That's something we do all the time, isn't it? Totally. We're always sizing things up. It's how we decide what to buy, where to go, even who to be friends with. It really is. It's like a built-in system for understanding the world and for making choices. Exactly. And it has created a conversation for 15 minutes based on my two videos. And it's basically a summary of the main concepts that I talk about. There is a two AI voices, a male American voice and a female American voice, talking about the ideas that I mentioned in my episode, talking about comparisons. Let's keep listening a little bit more. I'll skip forward slightly. So we're now two minutes in. Global reach, football wins hands down. Yeah, and I wonder why is that? Is it just tradition or is there something about football that makes it more, I don't know, universally appealing? It's probably a mix of things, but one thing that's definitely a factor is how easy it is to just play football. Right. So here, it is talking about the concepts I mentioned in my podcast. It's comparing football and basketball, which is what I did in one of the episodes I released. It's summarizing it in different words, reinforcing the grammar I was using. If you can put lots and lots of sources in, you can create these podcast episodes which cover lots of different topics. And let's say you're revising for an exam and you don't have time. You, know, you can put lots of episodes together, mix them, and then listen to the, this kind of summary, as long as you don't mind the kind of slightly not real AI voices. But they're much better than they used to be, these voices. But that is not the coolest part about this episode. What is here is this interactive mode, the beta form. What's going to happen here is I'm going to play this episode and it's going to start talking. And I'm going to press join here and watch what happens. Okay, so think about this for a second. Like, How often do you find yourself actually comparing things? Is this new phone really worth the upgrade? Or is this coffee shop as good as the one down the street? Yeah, it's something we do all the time, isn't it? Totally. We're always sizing things up. Yeah. How we decide what to buy. Whoa, did someone just break the fourth wall? Let's hear it. Hey, you use the term size up. Can you explain that to me? I think it's an English idiom. 
Oh, absolutely. That's a great question. It is a common English idiom. So when we say we're sizing things up, it basically means we're taking a look at something. We're evaluating it. Exactly. We're trying to get a sense of it, maybe comparing it to something else in our minds. It's like we're measuring it in some way, not necessarily with a ruler. More like an overall assessment. Like you might size up a new job offer. Or size up the competition in a game. Right. It fits perfectly with what we were just talking about constantly comparing things to make decisions. So sizing up is a quick way to say you're making those initial comparisons. Does that make sense? Hope that clears it up for you. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, we're gonna do a deep dive into comparing and contrasting. We've got some really interesting material that... It... In this interactive form of the audio overview, you can ask questions. You can stop the podcast and ask the AI questions and it will answer for you. If you do not understand a word, press join. Ask it to explain that word. If you want some help, more examples, you can press join. Ask it to give you more examples. I think this is a revolutionary tool. For people who are audio learners, people who li like listening to things, you can learn while listening. This is incredible. Let me play some more. Basically breaks down comparisons into two main types. Oh, yeah. The, this is better than that kind of comparison and the, this is as good as that or maybe not as good as such. Hey, yeah, what's up? You said these episodes use two forms of comparisons. Are there any other forms of comparisons not mentioned by these episodes? That's a really insightful question. It shows you're thinking deeply about this. The YouTube source material we're looking at today does focus on comparisons of superiority, better than, and equality. Oh, well, you're right. There are absolutely other ways we compare things. One common way is using superlatives. Exactly. Superlatives are when you say something is the most of a quality. Like, this is the best coffee I've ever had. Or, that's the most interesting book I've heard this year. The first YouTube clip we looked at actually mentions a bonus episode on superlatives in their study pack. Oh, that's right. So we could definitely dive into best, worst, most, and least comparisons another time. Another type of comparison involves using words like similar to or different from highlighting the similarities or differences rather than a degree of quality for example football is different from basketball in its rules or budget travel can be similar to luxury travel in terms of creating lasting memories this is i don't have words for this kind of technology right this is a, just a really cool kind of thing and i, I hope that you guys can think of more creative ways to use this than i do I think this has the potential to be a really useful and important tool for all language learners. You don't have to just use my YouTube videos. You can go and find any YouTube video and put it in here. You can go and find different articles about uh, certain grammar points that you're interested in. Or if you want to learn medical vocabulary, go and copy a bunch of medical vocabulary resources, put them in here, and then get it to make you a podcast that you can talk about, that you can interact with, and you can have this learning experience. I think this is a potentially revolutionary tool, and I hope you guys all use it. It's Google Notebook LM. It's free to use at the moment. Hopefully it stays free forever. It's just really cool. Why don't you give it a go and let me know how you use it. If you make any cool kind of podcast audio overviews, send them my way and let's have a look and let's compare what we can make using this resource.